Rojo or Rojo, depending on how you want to pronounce it, is a tool that allows you to sync things from your file system, such as scripts or text files, into Roblox Studio as instances. And this is super useful because it allows you to get access to professional tooling, such as Git and Visual Studio Code, with all the extensions that come with it, which are all really, really nice. The one big problem is that the installation can be quite tedious, and the keyword is can, because in this video I'll show you the simplest way to get Ro Roho and Visual Studio Code and get up and running with as little command line usage as possible, because the command line, it's finicky, it's kind of foreign, it's kind of scary, and really, you don't need to use it. So, if you enjoy this video, make sure to like and subscribe, and make sure to join my Discord server where we talk about Roblox and scripting and everything in between. Links are in the description. So, the first thing we're going to install is Git. So, in summary, Git is just basically a tool that allows you to manage your code and back it up on the cloud and allow you to re revert to previous versions if something goes wrong or if you just want to check it out. And it just saves it. It's really nice because you can have different branches, so like a production branch where the code released to the public goes, and you could have like an alpha and a beta branch, which allow you to test code, like provide it to other people without screwing up your main build. There's a lot better videos on YouTube that explain Git, so I'll link one right now if you want to check it out. And the installation is quite straightforward. So just go to gitscm.com slash downloads, you want to just download for Windows and then follow the installer. I assume you guys can follow the installer, but I'll just go through it as well. Here we go, git, whatever. All the defaults should be just fine for you. So git, in essence, is a command line tool. And while the command line is very powerful, it's also hard to use and not very intuitive. Luckily, there's a solution, and that's in the form of GitHub Desktop. So GitHub Desktop like, is built on top of Git by GitHub, which is like a cloud hosting website for Git, and allows you to back up your code to the cloud. And it gives you a nice interface to do stuff with Git. So it has all the power of Git with all the usability. So in order to download GitHub Desktop, you simply go to desktop.github.com, download, and then I'll just install it. And then once it's done downloading, you can open it, and it will install, and it has installed. So one thing you want to notice is I've already installed GitHub Desktop beforehand, and I'm signed into my GitHub account. So what you want to do is go to File, Options, Accounts, and in your github.com, you want to create a GitHub account and sign into it. So just go to github.com, create an account there, sign in on GitHub Desktop. It'll just make you sign in on your browser, and you should be good to go. You see, I already have some stuff here. You don't really have to worry about this. This is just an existing repository. Now, we need to get all of this stuff first because Roho uses Git when it initializes a project, and it just makes it easier that way. You don't have to initialize a repository which stores all of your code by yourself. So now we have our version control software down. Git and GitHub Desktop, both are very good tools, and in combination, they're great. Now let's get our code editor. And for that, I'll be using Visual Studio Code, which is a glorified text editor made by Microsoft. It's for all platforms. Super, super nice. It's my favorite tech code editor for sure. And it's just very versatile, very nice. So you want to download that. Same thing. You have a getting started guide conveniently over here. And it's very lightweight as well, very tiny. And then you just want to go through all of the installation. So once the installation is done, you should be able to boot it up. I'm just going to go to Visual Studio Code over here. Let me just get rid of that.
So here is Visual Studio Code. It's kind of blank right now. There's nothing in it because you have to put files in it. You have to give it things to work. So now that Visual Studio Code has been installed, we can install the Roho plugin, which gives us access to the Roblox Studio plugin, as well as the file system management, as I spoke of before. So in the left-hand bar, go down to this little block icon, which is the extensions, or you can do Control-Shift-X. And you can see I have a ton of extensions installed. That's for the different languages that I use, like C-sharp, JavaScript, whatever. It's really nice. I can have all of them in the same place. I also have some cosmetic themes installed, which is pretty nice. You'll probably only have IntelliCode, or it'll ask you to install IntelliCode. That's also super nice. It just gives you like AI-assisted auto-completion. But we want Roho right now. So I'm going to type in Roho in the search bar. Here it is. We can install it. And the first thing we want to do is go into extension settings. And we want to make sure, let me just get rid of that. We want to make sure plugin management is turned on. And then in order to find our Roblox Studio plugins path, we can go to Roblox Studio. Let me boot it up. I'm going to create a base plate. Then navigate to the plugins tab, go to the plugins folder. And in the plugins folder, you can already see I have the Ro Roho extension. I'm just going to delete that so I show you it actually installs. Click in this little top bar area to highlight your path. Hit Control C to copy it. Go back into Visual Studio Code. Then go to the Studio Plugins path. Hit Control V to paste. And then Roho should automatically manage our Roblox Studio plugin because you need the two halves. You need the normal, like, computer side and you need the Roblox Studio plugin. And that's great. So next, you want to presumably get up your file explorer. So here we go. And let's create our first Roho project. So I like to make my projects in a nice, sensible place, like documents. You could make it on your desktop. You could make it wherever you want. But documents is a nice, secure spot where you can store your folder with all of your stuff. So I'm going to create a new folder inside of documents. And I'll name this my first Roho project. And then... In Visual Studio Code, we want to go to File, Open Folder, and then navigate to Documents, and then find that folder that you created. So mine's right there. I'm going to click Select, and the folder's empty because we haven't put anything in it. Luckily, Roho has a nice function that allows you to populate this folder with a bunch of like boilerplate assets. So go to View, Command Palette, or you can use Control Shift P, start typing Roho, and then you want to go to Roho Initialize and hit Enter. So you can see in the bottom right, it has installed the plugin. So if we were to actually go back into Roblox Studio, go into the plugins folder, you can see the plugin is there, which is exactly what we want. So back inside of Visual Studio Code, you can see we have a few things. We have this default.project.json file that I will talk about in just a sec. And you have the source. That's what SRC stands for with client, server, and shared. So before I talk about this file and how these files work, let's just get a setup going. So I'm going to type Roho build place model file and you can see this build.rbxlx file has been created and then we want to let's just get rid of this Roblox Studio window we can go back into the file explorer go to our project go to the build.rbxlx and then double click it and it should open up in Roblox Studio 
So this has been generated completely by Roho. And there's a few like basic scripts. This is a server script. This is replicated storage. And then we have starter play scripts. And you'll see if I go back into Roho, hit Control Shift P to get up the, the command palette, go to Roho Start Server. And then it has a bunch of these like local hosts. You don't have to worry about that. Defaults are all fine. If you go to plugins, then Roho, I already have it docked down here. And then if you just hit connect, you can see the defaults match. So localhost matches localhost, and the 34872 matches 34872. You can hit connect. And if it doesn't work, it'll have an error message, but ours works. It says our project, and it says localhost. So nothing visibly changes. But if we go back to the Visual Studio Code, let's go to our init.server.lua. So the init.server.lua file is a basic server script, but it has a init, and init is a special keyword that basically goes and takes it and puts it in its parent's position and takes everything else in the folder and makes it descendants. And you can learn more about that in the Roho documentation, and which I'll link in the description. So if I change this to print Roho works and hit Control S to save the file, I can go back into Roblox Studio, and I'm on the client right now. You can see it says Roho works. So our changes from Visual Studio Code have replicated into Roblox Studio. Now, this does not work the other way around. So if I say, put something like there, it does not go into Visual Studio. One day they're planning to add that, but that is not the case right now. And that's the whole idea behind Roho. And it's really, really nice. Super cool. So now let's talk about this default.project.json file. So JSON basically stands for JavaScript Object Notation. And that sounds scary. It may look scary, but it's actually quite simple. So each of these little like brackets is like a new scope. It, this is like a Roblox table, basically, except instead of equal signs, we have colons, and instead of just like variables, we have everything as strings or other like objects. And each thing in this tree corresponds to something in the actual Roblox project. So you can see replicate, replicate storage here, common. And then common has a path. This is a special like attribute that connects it to src slash shared, which coincidentally is right here. So everything in this folder in our file system will get copied over to Roblox. So if I go back to the Roblox, you can see common hello. And the reason it's called common is because we define the name here. It doesn't have to be exactly the same name and this is super cool you can do this for the server as well as a client you can do it wherever you want though most of the time I get rid of everything else because right now the support for total Roho projects is quite limited so I just get rid of everything except for the scripts so it doesn't like change anything it just makes everything a little bit easier and you'll notice that the .lua files are module scripts, the .server.lua files are server scripts, and the .client.lua are local scripts. And if we go back, you can see we have a module script, server script, local script. And it's pretty simple, makes a lot of sense. So when you're editing your default.project.json, just make sure to link your path to whatever directory or folder you want to copy the scripts into and I encourage you to play around with it it's good to understand this so in the future it's easier to set up whatever file structure you want and that's it for the basic Roho setup but there's a lot more you can do and that's in terms of the extensions I encourage you to go to the store check out a few Roblox extensions I'll put my favorites in the description so you can check them out and install them for yourself it really streamlines your Roblox experience and makes it a lot better. And that's about it for this video. So this video is kind of abbreviated. I went through things pretty quickly. 
like version control and just the JSON. So I encourage you to look those up online. I will also have resources in the description. Make sure to check out the Roho documentation. It's pretty expansive and it'll help you a lot when installing it. But other than that, make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Comment any of your questions down below because this was overwhelming when I first did it. But the benefits are just crazy. It's so, so good. Other than that, though, I hope you have a nice day and goodbye. Thank you.